Hi everyone. This is a really special video for me for a number of reasons. Firstly, so many of you have asked me to do an analysis of the FPV cycle glide frame. It's a really popular frame and I am so excited to bring you the results of this analysis. I've been really fortunate to be able to collaborate with two fantastic people on this video. First is Bob Rugi, Kebab FPV himself, who has been kind enough to provide the CAD files for this analysis so that I didn't have to model the, the glide myself. So thank you very much to him. It's going to make sure that the geometry that I'm using in the simulation is as accurate as it could possibly be because those are the files that are actually used to, to cut the frame. Secondly, huge shout out to Ciotti for providing um, the black box logs that we're going to be comparing the simulation to. I thought it only fair that uh, you know, I give credit where credit's due and to the other people who put hard work into to making this video possible. Another reason why this video is really special for me is because it's my first video after hitting a thousand subscribers. So thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed, everybody who's supported the channel and special thanks to uh, the few special people who have joined my Patreon over the last few weeks. So uh, thank you. But that's enough preamble. Let's, uh, let's crack on with the video and see what we find when we look at the FPV cycle glide. So I wanted to really take this analysis of the FPV cycle glide a step beyond the previous work that I've done. Up until now, we have always considered resonant modes in isolation, and we've only looked at the dominant mode shape for each resonant frequency. But of course, at every frequency, there are contributions from all of the mode shapes. And what harmonic analysis allows us to do is to see the contribution of multiple resonant modes at any frequency. So here's an example. We have two resonant modes that are, are close to a frequency of interest. A first mode shape that looks like this and a second mode shape that looks like this. And you can see that they're very different mode shapes. If we wanted to consider what the actual response of the quadcopter looks like, we have to take into account the fact that it's moving in both of these ways simultaneously. And that gives us a response that looks like this. You can see it's sort of a combination of the two mode shapes. That's what harmonic analysis allows us to do. But of course, we're not going to be looking at only two modes. In this analysis of the glide, we're going to be looking at the first 14 individual resonant modes. And I've just put a picture up here of what all of those different mode shapes look like. So if you want to, you can pause the video and, and look through them. Also, these slides are going to be available, link in the video description, so you can, you can go and download it and play these videos for yourself. These 14 resonant modes cover frequencies ranging from about 150 hertz all the way up to 750 hertz. And the reason that we've gone up that high is because we want to have at least 1.5 times the maximum driving frequency for modes to include to make sure that we're getting the best possible simulation of the, of the response. And the analysis is not just going to consider the resonant frequencies as I've considered before, but it's actually going to be considering every possible frequency in the range 100 hertz to 500 hertz. And I've picked a top frequency of 500 hertz because in my opinion, hardware low pass filtering on the gyro will attenuate frequencies above 500 hertz to the level where they no longer affect flight performance. And the reason that we're not looking below 100 hertz is that from the black box logs, there's really no resonant activity in the glide frame below 100 hertz. So there's no need to look down there. So here we have the analysis on the roll axis. And as you can see, below 100 hertz, there's really not much going on. It's very, very quiet, apart from, of course, uh, this spike here, which is to do with the real movement of the quad in the air. So uh, we definitely don't need to include that from a, a resonance simulation standpoint. I've listed out here the frequencies of the 14 resonant modes that we're, that we're considering. And I've also highlighted uh, a number of resonant modes that I think are most relevant for the response of the of the glide on roll. You can see that there's um, a little something going on at, at maybe about 160 hertz and then a quite clear resonant spike at uh, about 200 hertz. So let's look at 160 hertz first. And this is again the harmonic analysis. So you're seeing 
the contribution of all the resonant modes of the structure up to 750 hertz and you're seeing how that quad is going to be moving in the air with uh, with all of those resonant modes included and you can see that there is you know definitely some movement the flight controller in this analysis is up front here and you can definitely see that there you would expect a certain amount of uh, of movement of the of the flight controller there it's hard to see but there is a little bit of a uh, roll component to that if we now consider 200 hertz you know, here we've got a a very clear um, torsional mode going on with the with the two arms and also it's harder to see but there's a, a bit of a bouncing mode and again there's you know really good uh, roll component to that so that's creating the the spike that we see there on the roll axis and we can see that we should expect to see a lot of uh, vibrational energy concentrated at 200 Hertz because the glide frame has four resonant modes that are very close to 200 Hertz and when you have a resonant mode close to the driving frequency it means that the energy transfer into that vibrational mode is really good the the mode likes to be uh, excited at that frequency if we look now at the pitch axis and the first thing that really jumped out at me comparing pitch to roll is that the noise floor on pitch is much higher than what we saw on the roll axis and that's really important because that higher noise floor is going to affect your ability to turn up your d gains and reduce your filtering and i was interested to see how the quad was moving at 100 hertz and here's the harmonic analysis result for 100 hertz now remembering of course that in this black box log we have the flight controller mounted up front in this location we can really see how the the weight of the camera in the front of the glide and the relatively thin top plate and bottom plate which is obviously designed to save weight allows that control flight controller to pitch up and down a little bit and as it does that, that's going to allow any sort of vibration that's coming through the frame at those frequencies to excite the pitch axis a little more than the roll axis. And as a result, we see a higher noise floor. Even though there's no resonant mode there, just because of the way the quad frame is able to move, you see a little bit more excitation of the, of the pitch axis for the flight controller. And as a result, a little bit of a higher noise floor. But of course, there's also this very large resonant peak at 200 Hertz. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Again, this is the same mode shape that we looked at on the roll axis. And again, we can see that there's definitely some movement on pitch as these, uh, as these motors rotate. And the reason that that peak is so big is because of that concentration of resonant frequencies around 200 Hertz that's really concentrating the vibrational energy that's coming from the motors at that frequency and giving you a, a much bigger response in that tight group of frequencies around 200 hertz than you would expect if the mode shapes were more spread out and this is something that i think is really critical in good frame design is that not only do you want to try and increase the resonant frequencies as much as possible where you can without adding too much weight but you also want to try and separate out those resonant frequencies and if you have two resonant frequencies that are very, very similar, you really want to try and pick one of them to move down a little bit in frequency and one of them to move up a little bit in frequency to get that separation. I would say it's more important to separate the modes, make sure they're far apart so that they don't concentrate the vibrational energy at a particular frequency than it is to just move them higher in, in frequency. In the future, I hope to be able to show you a frame design that I've been working on where I have been tuning the design to try and separate the resonant frequencies apart from each other. And finally, let's look at the yaw axis. Now, what you can see from the black box log here is that there's a high level of noise across quite a broad swath of frequencies from about 200 hertz up to about 300 hertz. So let's pick a point in the middle of that range, about 250 hertz, and have a look at the harmonic analysis result for that frequency. And what we can see is that the quad is moving around and there's clearly a yaw component to that movement. And that yaw component is what you're, you're seeing in the black box log. But as we get up towards 300 hertz, we see that the excitation becomes even more severe. So let's look at a 300 hertz result 
and we can see that that is very nearly a pure your resonant mode. And the reason that that mode shape looks so clean and why we're not seeing a combination of bunches of different modes is because that mode shape and that frequency is quite separated from its neighbors. You know, it's, it's about 50 Hertz separated above and below. So we've got 267, 304 and then 348. When those modes are far apart, you see less effect of the neighboring modes on the mode shape. And so we see what looks more like a, a clean resonant mode, like you might be used to seeing in my previous videos. The fact that that's such a powerful your mode really makes it clear as to why we're getting such a strong response at 300 Hertz on, on the your axis. So in summary, what I've really learned by doing the analysis of this frame and talking to people in the community about it is that the Glide is a hugely popular frame. People have commented to me that they really like the balance of a relatively lightweight and durability. And they've particularly said that they like that crashes tend to break the arms rather than the body of the frame, which makes it easier to repair. However, if I was to suggest any improvements to the design, it would be to increase the torsional stiffness of the arms. So when I mean, when I talk about torsional stiffness, I mean increase the stiffness against this motor rotation around the end of the arm. Because that motor rotation around the end of the arm really contributes to a lot of the, the resonant uh, peaks in the black box logs that we see. And if you were to increase that stiffness, you would shift those frequencies higher and make them less of a concern. So I wanted to save a little bit of juicy news for the end of this video. I'm really excited to say that I've been working with Bob Rugi quite closely on some of his new frame designs, looking at the vibration and resonance performance of those designs and applying this same harmonic analysis that I used on the glide frame to helping him refine the designs of some of his future frames. And I hope that that's gonna to continue to be a productive relationship. Uh, Bob has been really supportive of this video, providing the CAD for the Glide, helping me do that analysis much more easily and quickly. So I thank him a lot for that. And uh, I'm excited to see what we, uh, what we come up with over the, the next few weeks and months as we work together. I hope you found this video interesting. And I hope that you feel that taking that analysis to the next level from a pure modal analysis to a full harmonic simulation has really provided an extra layer of insight into how these frames move around when they vibrate and they resonate in the air. If you like this sort of content and you want to see more and you'd like to support the channel, the easiest thing you can do is just hit that subscribe button and maybe leave a comment down below. Maybe you have a question or something that you'd like clarification on. I try and answer as many questions as I can. And I'm excited to start that conversation with you guys. But for now, that's all I have. So until next time, uh, wish you all very happy flying.